Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Whose Opinion Is It Anyway? With your guests, hosts, Candace Mashat and Victor Johnson. Hey, how's it going, everyone? We are live. It is 5 o'clock on Friday evening, and it is time for Whose Opinion Is It Anyway? I have no idea where Vic is. Still looking for Vic, waiting for Vic to join us. As we wait for Vic to join us, we'll wait for a few more people to click in. Paul, how's it going? How was your weekend? What'd you do? Well, you know, I always have a wonderful time. Um, what is your name? Candace. <laughs> <laughs> <None of them. laughs> so rolling at the bottom. Otherwise, how else would you know? <laughs> I've been living the dream, man. Enjoying, uh, enjoying life as it is uh, in Flint, Michigan. Under COVID nineteen, um, loving having my family here. Uh, Marcus is in from California. Paul Jr. is in the apartment next door. Uh, it's a family thing, man. Enjoying it and all this technology. I'm learning as far as uh, these live streams. This has been fabulous. Marcus is in uh, California. Yeah, Marcus is work <laughs> Marcus is working for a reality TV show called Married to Medicine. <gasps> I love Married to Medicine. So Married to Medicine, Medicine, LA. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Well, he was working on that show when um, when all this happened, and he was trying mm -hmm. to decide whether to stay in LA or come home. Mm -hmm. And uh, his brother convinced him to get on the first thing smoking, and he came home. Mm. So then, did he go back after? Uh, well, he's 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 pushed his ticket back twice already because he's I like I thought, hey. I, saw him, I thought I saw him the other day. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I don't think he's quite ready to go back. He's trying to figure out what to do with his apartment. He's got an apartment out there in California, and it's costing him eight hundred dollars a month to not live in it. Okay, yeah that 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 could definitely be an issue that I'm giving out eight hundred dollars and I'm not there. Uh, truly. Truly, truly. So I've been enjoying your commentary. Let me catch this and I'll let you talk to the folks and I'll be right back. All right. Um, well, as everyone knows, we are currently um, in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 has spread literally all over the globe. And here in the United States, we're definitely feeling the effects of the virus as well as uh, in Michigan. There's been some uh, different developments, some different things that have gone on. I know that uh, a lot of people are anxious and a lot of people are nervous. And as a result of that, you know, they move in the way that they can. Um, we have a lot of people that are on the unemployment system that are not normally on the unemployment system. And so that's uh, kind of put some added uh, pressure on the system. It's maybe slowed down some resources. Um, we did have some good news come out of that. Uh, and that was the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance. And that comes from the federal government. And that is $600 every um, week. In addition to whatever your state's unemployment is uh, or whatever um, you've been approved for as far as your state's unemployment goes. So that's that 600 plus that. And so while that's been some great news, uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, people that are on the system is more taxing to the system than normal, it's been a bit of a struggle and a stressor to get those funds and get that relief out to people. Um, and so we've had quite a few people. I know here in Michigan, it, it's been quite difficult. I saw a video earlier about a young lady in Kansas where she was having some difficulties. And so um, COVID-19 has definitely come through and wrecked this planet in a way that we would have never um, even been able to imagine, even in our wildest dreams. And so this is one of those times where we're in need of real leadership. And so we're just really trying to figure out, you know, hey, um,
Hey guys, stand by. We have lost our connection with Candace. We're trying to get Vic in here as well. So uh, be patient with us. Give us a couple of seconds, a minute. I don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll be right back as soon as we can. Hey Vic, how's it going? Can you hear me? All right. Can you hear yeah, me? I can hear you now. I couldn't have first. All right. Well, we're live. We're waiting for Candace to jack back in. Uh, she uh, dropped off the stream here. Okay. A minute ago. I think what I'm going to do, just in case it's me, I'm going to go ahead and connect my laptop with Ethernet to the internet. Okay. But I, I think that should only affect the outgoing stream. How are you doing, Vic? Pretty good. And yourself? Man, I'm enjoying this. I, You know, I'm enjoying this, I guess, more than I should. <laughs> okay. I meant to come on. Uh, a friend of mine made me a designer mask. Oh, really? Yeah. Hold on. I'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm afraid to show Candace because she's going to want one. <laughs> hold on a second. Let me get my stuff together. <laughs> they view it. Mm, mm, mm. So how about you? You keep busy? Oh yeah, man. In so some you're respects, I'm busier you now than I was on, before this whole COVID nineteen. Huh? Are you teaching online classes? Yeah, that the where our classes have become online because of the situation, you know. But yeah, absolutely. How you like that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> huh? I got my little mud cloth thing going. <laughs> no doubt. It looks like you got somebody to cut your hair, man. Who cut your hair? Uh, nobody. Nobody. How do you get me a haircut. Oh, my goodness. Mine is so <laughs> toe up from the flow up. It's a mess. I had to put on a hat just to be halfway presentable. Okay, here's Candace. She's in now. First of all. Huh? I heard the mask comment. I was sitting back, standing, <laughs> ready to get back in the room. Let me close my door. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> my right, well, I'm going to leave you guys to have your show. Well, Vic already left me. <sighs> What's up? Vic, how's it going? Oh, man, you got it. You got it. You Vic, need to get a haircut. Seen, That's what's up. I haven't uh, seen uh, you in, uh, like, a month. Over a month. Because huh? I haven't seen you in, like, over a month. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. It's been a while. You need to find me an Afro pick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you quite have enough hair for the Afro pick. Just no, I'm yet. just saying, if, if this thing keeps on going, I'm going to need one, right? I'm going to need a pick I'm for in my need fro. One. I'm um, in need of one, which is why we keep living the bun life. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> uh, nice and curly right now. But, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I... I started the show a little bit earlier and somehow I got disconnected, but I was just simply talking about COVID-19 and the way that globally it has affected everyone. Uh, and then here in the United States, how it, it's just, it's wreaked havoc in a way that we could never even, you know, expect. It's been yeah. crazy here. 
Um, you have more Americans that are on unemployment than have ever been on un unemployment Absolutely. before. And so even though you have the $600 that comes weekly from the um, federal government, it's the pandemic uh, unemployment assistance. And even okay. though you get that 600 on top of whatever your state assistance is, because there's so many people on the system, it's hard to even get them in and get them, um, you know, um, and get them approved so that they can begin to get the 600 plus whatever the, their state is giving them. So that's been quite um, a task. I saw a video earlier of a young woman from Kansas who was, and, and understandably so, she was irate and frustrated because mm, she was yeah. at uh, the Kansas, uh, I don't know if they call it, I don't, I don't know if they call it DMV in there or Secretary okay. of State when yeah. you're in Kansas, but she was uh, there. And of course it was closed down because it's not, necessarily in a central service yeah. and so she did a video where she was very irate because she had just gotten accepted for a job but her license had expired and then she oh, came yeah. over her shoulder and there was a rest a fast food restaurant that was still open and so she didn't understand why they would be deemed essential but um something such as uh the kansas and i'm not sure what they call it in kansas but basically where she would go to get her driver's license renewed yeah. why that was not open mm -hmm. um and I, I definitely, my heart went out to her because she was talking about how she had to feed her children, you know, how she couldn't um, get unemployment. And, you know, I don't really know too much of her, her personal business, but that made me think about how here in Michigan, we have been pretty forward thinking with those processes because yeah. um, one of the things that's happened here in Michigan is that anybody whose um, driver's license or registration or if their special license expired after March 1st, um mm -hmm. then it's been extended so you're fine even if you, yeah. if you anything after march 1st if it's if it expired then you're still completely fine and that'll be excused and so mm -hmm. it makes me wonder and i'm gonna look into it of like what's going on with the other states how are they yeah. uh handling that kind of situation mm -hmm. what are they doing to look out for um the residents and mm -hmm. uh and and again i i completely felt her frustration with unemployment and all Absolutely. of that because that I mean, and I guess because I've worked on, you know, on the other side, because yeah. I've worked in constituent services, because I understand mm -hmm. everything that goes into these different systems. Um, mm -hmm. And then now also because I've been able to be on the other side of that and mm -hmm. having um, to uh, have filed for unemployment and do those yeah. sort of things, and know how frustrating frustrating that is so it's like I, I understand both sides absolutely um, and i just my my heart goes out to everyone right now because everyone mm -hmm. is suffering it's not easy and True. you have people that as a re result of those kind of things have become very frustrated and so i don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen the fact that here in michigan as well as in texas there's been some demonstration oh um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in lansing I mean, in Michigan, they went to Lansing and went to the Capitol and protested there. Had and it was mm -hmm. called Operation Gridlock. Yeah. Uh, and then in Texas, they went to the governor's mansion and protested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, people are frustrated because a lot of the systems that we have in place that are supposed to bring relief because they weren't necessarily designed for everyone to be on them at once. Um, yes. it's, it's a little bit harder for the things that have been put in uh, put in motion to work. So it's taking mm -hmm. a little bit longer. And I understand people's frustrations because they still have bills. You know, you still have people who have rent, consumers and all of that. And again, here in Michigan, um, mm -hmm. one of the things that the governor has put in place is there's some utility protection. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. I know yeah. in a lot of places, there have been some protection against evictions and all of that. So I think that people are doing what they can. But at the same time, we already naturally have an aversion to change as humans. True. And so... True. To have something this drastic happen and to have mm -hmm. to change in such a major way in a short time, mm -hmm. like I, I can I can only imagine, you know, the frustration that everyone is feeling and to have people who have worked their whole lives now have to try and figure out how they are going to take care of these families mm -hmm. that they've built. You know, they don't mm -hmm. really think about unemployment systems. You have a lot of people who have never been unemployed their entire life. They've That's always, so even if it wasn't the same job, but they found a job. So mm -hmm. it's just it's it's been really crazy really tough times and i think mm -hmm. um for me the absolute ugh annoyance in all mm -hmm. of this is the fact that because federally we have not seen any real leadership um <laughs> that can kind of give a template for what should be done nationally everybody's yeah. kind of doing their own thing in their states 
And so that uh -huh. puts us all at risk because we're not on one accord. Hmm. Why, why do you think, Candace, uh, Trump is, is doing what he's doing from a federal standpoint with regard to that? Do you, do you think it's philosophical? You think it's political or or what? I don't think anything with him is ever philosophical. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I just think there, there are actually a lot of factors that come into play. And I, I just think of the uh, phrase, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you hand power to someone, and his power is not even absolute, but anyway, yeah. we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. When you hand power to someone whom already couldn't handle whatever authority they already had, you mm -hmm. this is what we see. This is what we're witnessing. We're witnessing mm -hmm. someone who didn't quite know his job description to begin with, um, mm -hmm. trying to overextend and overreach in said job. Um, mm -hmm. And then not only that, but overreach in a way that's detrimental to people. It's not even helpful. Um, you'll see that even with the protests in Michigan, it was actually sponsored by the De the DeVos family. And it's like, why would the Secretary of Education be sponsoring <laughs> a protest against our mm -hmm. governor? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, why are you even in that? <laughs> and so, um, that I just, uh, Paul, what is that? Um, so I just think <laughs> that, um, yeah, so I just think that it's just really interesting that we we have these things going on, and at the time, and at this time when it's so crucial and real leadership is needed, the political posturing that's still happening, and you're playing with people's lives. Uh, even when he was asked yesterday about, you know, if he'd seen the protests and if he'd seen what was going on, he was like, "Yeah, I saw it." And at first, he wasn't really naming states. He was just like, "Yeah." And he was like, and so when the reporters asked him, like, well, what do you think? He was like, well, they'll listen to me. If you know that you have people that will listen to you and they're out there risking their lives based off of your word, then what 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 manner of person are you to allow that to happen? When you yourself said that no more than 10 people should be in a space at the same time. So now you encourage hundreds of people to gather. How much sense does that make? Vic, you there? Hear me? You hear me? Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, the reason why I'm I'm, I'm posing that question to you is, is because I, I think there is a bit of politics going on here with regard to philosophy, right? We've all heard mm -hmm. of the states' rights uh, philosophy, and that's uh, a viewpoint that many people in the GOP have, right? So so, so even when you look at that that gridlock march that took place in Lansing, right? All of these things smacks of political partisanship, right? Because you're hearing people from the GOP who are saying that we're not China, this is not a communist country and so mm -hmm. forth. And everything that's going on smacks of anti-Americanism. This is not the American way, right? What, what, what do you say to that when people make those comments? I think that those are people who- Even as, rela even as relates to uh, Trump putting the onus back on the states, Versus Which Trump funny, from though. a federal standpoint. Let me answer that. I hold on, I'm answer your question in a second. But remember when he was the one who said he had the unilateral decision to decide whether the states were going to open up again or not? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and then, absolutely. And then the next yeah. day, I think they asked Governor Whitmer and Governor yeah. Whitmer, and she was so polite in her response. She said, mm -hmm. "No, that's up mm -hmm. to the governors across the state, and the governors will be making that decision." And then Trump comes back the next day and goes, "Well." Mm -hmm. It's up to the states, but we'll be helping them. Now we come on. <laughs> but anyway, I think that um, with that and what makes it so scary mm -hmm. is that um, you do have people who don't understand that uh, this is for the protection of everyone. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with being a communist country. It has nothing to do with stripping rights. It has nothing. Mm -hmm. to, if your rights were stripped, I mean, I really need them to think about this. If your rights were really stripped, mm -hmm. how'd you go protest? <laughs> Hello. People, people in communist countries can't show up to protest. Yeah. Again. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, Absolutely. So it's kind of like if your rights were really stripped, you not only did you show up to protest, but you showed up to protest and you got out of your car, ignoring a, even a federal mandate of 10 people not being in the same Absolutely. spot. Absolutely. And then you showed up, and yes, Michigan is an open carry state. Then you showed up with rifles and everything else attached Hello. to your body. So Hello. you tell me. So you tell me where your rights were stripped, because it looks like you still have them. You tell me where they were stripped, 
because you still have them quite clearly. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're upset, and a lot of things. And I try to understand because you know, Vic, I believe in protesting. I believe sure. in giving power to the people. I also believe Absolutely. in common sense and keeping people Absolutely. healthy. And I also believe that, yeah, you have the right to choose to die, but that should not impede on my right to choose to live. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's not just you in this country. It's not just you in this state. When you go back, it won't be just you in those cities and wherever you're touching and wherever you're reaching. You are. There you go. Yep. That's what yeah. we're from. Thanks, Paul. But it, mm -hmm. but when you go back home um, and you're, you're protesting for the right to go up north when the people up north don't even want you up north. They're uh, saying uh, their uh, medical systems can't handle if y'all come up there and get sick. Mm -hmm, They're saying mm -hmm. that. you want to mm -hmm. come vacation, but you're what with you you're whining about a vacation and you get up there and vacation and you can very well make people that live up there all year round sick. You can cause a detriment to their mm -hmm. healthcare system mm -hmm. because you want a vacation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the time will come. We will be able to go back outside again. And actually, we can go outside now. You just got to stay with people who don't live in your house. Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to do all of that again. You will. But mm -hmm. you're prolonging it by going outside and risking yourself going in droves and people getting sick. You're mm -hmm. prolonging everybody's mm -hmm. freedom at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see. And, and, like, mm -hmm. and, and Candace, regarding that, that march, I mean, I'm even hearing smacks of racism. With regard to that march on yesterday, there was a young woman, um, African American uh, student at Michigan State University, who wasn't aware of this march taking place, and she wound up in the middle of this march and so forth. And she she had persons who, who were spewing all types of venom towards her of the racist sort, right? Uh, so so I'm wondering, did you hear anything about that as well? On to I think um, Detroit News or somebody was playing it on their Facebook or something like that. So I happened to click on there and they literally, have you ever talked to these people? They literally were like, oh, hey, how you doing? Why are you out here? And this lady had a Trump uh, sign up and her son was standing on the back of the pickup truck. Yes, yeah. pickup truck. Did you hear me? Standing on the back of the pickup yeah, truck absolutely. With, a huge, with a huge Trump flag. Uh -huh. And she was like, uh, I'm just out here because Gretchen can't do this to us. And hey, Melania, how you doing, girl? What? What? You had a chance to be in front of a camera and state your point and explain why you're really mad. And you said, hey, Milani, exactly. hey, girl. And that was it. <laughs> what is what, what she doing to you? Because you're out there protesting. So what mm -hmm. exactly is she stopping you from doing? Mm -hmm. And every time she's been asked about the protest, she said, I mm -hmm. certainly believe in your right to pro protest. Mm -hmm. She's like, I won't stop you. She's like, you want to protest mm -hmm. in your car, protest in your car. Mm -hmm. um, but you standing next to each other protesting is the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so he's mm -hmm. even saying, you know, you want to dissent, dissent. Absolutely. But do it in a responsible Absolutely. way. She's like, oh, protest me, but do it in your <laughs> time where you're not making other people sick. But uh -huh. then another thing was they were blocking Sparrow Hospital where ambulances couldn't even get in. Wow, out. really? Yes. Really? Yes. So it's just like, wow. what was your point in this? And again, mm -hmm. I, and I and I always look for reasons when people do stuff like that. Like, because mm -hmm. again, I believe in protesting. I believe in people having power. I believe in that. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that our governor works for us. I believe our constitution mm -hmm. is in place to protect us from a tyrannical government. Absolutely. I believe in all of that. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, when you start telling me that you're protesting because you can't go to a vacation home, that you're protesting <laughs> because you can't get feeds for a garden and it's still snowing in Michigan, you got to make that make sense to me. But Candace, you I think what, what some of the people were objecting to was what they referred to as government overreach. They're, they're saying that, that Governor Whitmer is overreaching her bonds. What, what do you say about that? They didn't say she was overreaching until she told them they couldn't go to their vacation homes. <laughs> That's what I say to that. These are, literally, that. <laughs> these are literally the same rules in place. The only thing she changed was you can't go to your vacation home. Uh huh. Come on now. So what's up? You 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 protesting because you so, can't live in privilege because right now your privilege would kill everybody. What are you protesting? So is there a delicate balance you think though? You know, as, as it relates to uh, the powers that governments have, right? I, and when you I look know, at I, this, when, when you look at this particular situation, it, and uh, albeit it is an emergency situation, it's a pandemic, mm -hmm. it's a global pandemic, and so mm -hmm. forth. Do you think that governments are? are willing to to relinquish the power, the additional powers that they've been able to absorb during times like they, these. They won't have a choice. They won't have you, a choice. You, you 
Oh, trust me, they won't have a choice. And the reason what? I'm the reason I'm saying that I believe, at least in Michigan, that she will willingly relinquish it is because uh -huh. all of her executive orders are all temporary with the expiration dates on them. Okay. The things you might want to check out though uh, is the Department of Justice and what they're trying to do. See if you see an expiration date on that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh -huh. all these other federal things that they're trying to do. See if you can find an expiration date on those things. It's, uh, it's the sleight of hand. Look over here. Absolutely. So you don't see what I'm but really do doing. We're, we're going to find that, right? As it relates to dealing with this from a federal standpoint. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think we'll find it? Yes. An expiration yes. date? Absolutely. No. <laughs> I think absolutely. that they're going to try. Say absolutely. I think, I think they're going to try and keep it federally. Oh, okay. Because of what we're dealing with now. And then the fact that everybody can't see that the very person that's pointing figures are, is the one that's trying to change things into a dictatorship. Yeah. It's like, how are you missing this? Mm -hmm. How is this not? But then it reminds me of, and I don't, and you know, everybody believe whatever you want to believe. But for me and my personal beliefs, I'm a Christian. I believe the uh -huh. Bible, I believe what it says. And so I believe like the line where it's, where it's like in the Bible, where the scripture that says that they would fool the very elite if it were possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm absolutely. like, this is what we're absolutely. seeing right now. Absolutely. What is going on? Uh-huh. What is going on? Um, and then I was, but oh, you'd be surprised how many people boldly defend the things that he's done. Or, but he backtracks like nobody's business on everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But his, his base is still there. His defenders are still there. And then for him to post that tweet, which I knew was coming, talking about liberate Michigan. Liberate. After they asked him to <laughs> okay, what was he getting at? What was he getting at about oh, he, uh, with the march and so forth? No, well, he was saying he was he was sending a message to them because they're supposed to protest again next Wednesday. Okay. So he was, he was saying to them, keep protesting, keep doing this. Yeah. Because I think what the real problem is here, it's nothing but political posturing. The real issue yeah. here is the fact that we all know she's on the short list to be VP of the United States. Yeah, and true. he's in danger true. of having a woman who can come in and steal those white women votes from him. That's his real uh -huh. problem. And mm -hmm. so he's got to try to make her look bad. He's got to try to make yeah. her look like an enemy. True. He's got to try to make it look like her own state doesn't even want her because he is yeah. in trouble of losing some of that white female vote. Mm -hmm. That's what's really going on here. So do you think she she's uh, probably going to be the, the possible vice presidential nominee on the ticket? Uh, yeah, I think she's looking good. Oh, okay. I think she's looking good well, for Who's her competition, though? Who's her competition? So people have hinted at Cuomo, um, but I don't know that Cuomo wants to be VP, but we'll see. Um, but people have kind of hinted at Cuomo. People, of course, are still saying Kamala Harris. Uh, okay. People are still bringing up Stacey Abrams. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see. We'll Elizabeth see. Warren? Elizabeth Warren? I saw Elizabeth was on there. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the difference, the <laughs> difference between, no, let me tell you, the difference between Gretchen Whitmer and Elizabeth Warren, because don't get me wrong, um, if Elizabeth Warren would have still been running for president, I would have voted for Elizabeth Warren. I would have. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, see, I finally, now. She's now, right. I, I, no I finally slouch. told you, I finally told you, Vic, after my number there one you, went there out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> after my number one there went out, go. Elizabeth Warren became my new number one. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so when she dropped out, I was like, I'm just going to have to roll. <laughs> However, we're running. <laughs> so, um, again, I, but again, but a lot bring, of the, Let me ask you this question, since mm -hmm. you're the political pundit here, right? But really quickly, who, though. Who brings, the mo who brings more value to the ticket? Right, because but he's gonna need something, right? So this he, is the thing: everybody brings he brings different. Joe Biden. Every yeah, yeah, everybody brings different value to the ticket. Because again, if you if you look at Governor Gretchen Whitmer out of Michigan, she speaks um, to a lot of moderates. You know, she she okay. can she'll be able to reach that in her approach and how she does things. A lot of her policies speaks to a lot of moderates. Like they'll feel comfortable voting for her. Mm -hmm. um, and then not only that, but she's shown that she's strong and has enough of a backbone. However, mm -hmm. she's also mm -hmm. shown a delicacy in how she deals with the president, even when he's wrong and even when he's attacking her. And mm -hmm. that might actually be appetizing to those white female voters in his mm -hmm. base. And so that's what he's mm -hmm. worried about. So he has to show her incompetent in running mm -hmm. her own state sure. and has to Absolutely. show her an enemy of the Republican Party, you know, an enemy of the Republican Party in order to um, make sure that she doesn't yeah. steal those votes that she could very well get. I think mm -hmm. when you're looking at uh, an Elizabeth Warren, she pulls over a more um, 
a more progressive base. Yeah, uh, that uh, said Gretchen Whitmer might not be able to pull over. They might not necessarily already be with Gretchen. But at this point, I feel like the lines in this country are drawn, you know, mm. um, although and I'm going to tell you in a second. Um, mm. And so I think Elizabeth Warren is able to uh, make him more palatable to a progressive audience um, and to mm-hmm. millennials and to a younger audience. Uh, so I think that's what Elizabeth Warren brings. And she brings some hope that some kind of changes that we've been hoping for might actually happen if she can get in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when you look at uh, Kamala and Stacey, obviously that you're, you're definitely counting on the black vote with that. And now mm-hmm. that, but you're counting on black women who show up in droves to vote mm-hmm. um, with mm-hmm. the two of them. And you're looking at uh, mm-hmm. Kamala again. If you have black women who are a little bit more moderate or whatever, even though mm-hmm. Kamala has done a lot of progressive things, don't get me wrong. But I mm-hmm. feel like Kamala can pull some of the moderate black women over. You know, I think they would be willing yeah. to go and vote uh, in that way. And Stacey absolutely is going to pull the young progressive crowd. No doubt, mm-hmm. no question, no anything. Mm-hmm. Stacey's going to pull those progressive young black voters. For him. Mm-hmm. So he could go either way with those four women of wherever he picks. They're all going to bring something different from each other. Mm-hmm. And then so, so, goes- so in terms of numbers, Candace, in terms mm-hmm. of votes, who does he need more so, right? He 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 virtually has the black vote in many respects. He has he has the older black vote. And then I think the he older has the black vote. Yeah. And then I think he also has uh some of the middle-aged black vote for the simple fact that they feel like, look, we we can't do four more years of this. We don't mm-hmm. necessarily want you, but we know we don't want him. Mm-hmm. You know. So I think that that so I don't think that I think if that happens, there won't necessarily be a vote for Joe Biden. It'll be a vote against Donald Trump. Yeah, so I think that's what you're getting there. But who does he need, though? Is it the white female vote, the black female vote, right? The the Midwestern vote or the Southern so I, vote? Who does he I, need? I think Certain groups. I mean, I guess it just depends on how you look at it. If he wants to come from the angle of, okay, because of his ties to Obama, he's already going to. And you saw that uh, former President Barack Obama did go ahead and yeah. endorse him. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a, a lovely video, you know, classy mm-hmm. as always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I wish some yeah. people would, instead of watching his tape to figure out how to diffuse it, watch his tape to figure out how to perform like him. At uh-huh. this point, I'm a taken imitator in the White House <laughs> for whatever reason, instead of an agitator. But you know, um, but I think that uh, as as we we look at that, um, I think that they're going to look at the fact that with former President Barack Obama endorsing him and the fact that he already had a mm-hmm. high percentage of that Southern old vote for himself. Um, yeah. I think the pool is not going to be as strong for him to look at a black woman anymore. Just being honest. Uh, um, I think okay. that he's going to have to look at trying to figure out how to steal some of that female white vote from Trump's base. And so he might lean toward, and I don't think that Elizabeth Warren is the one to do it, which is why I'm saying Gretchen has a strong showing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I think she appeals to that part of his base. Hmm. Okay. I, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. I can see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting, though. But he can't take any any vote for granted, though, not even the black vote. I'm trying to tell you, I wouldn't sit back and think they're going to come out because uh, Hillary, excuse me, Miss yeah. Secretary Clinton, former Secretary Clinton thought she had that in the bag. And there were some um, uh, areas of uh, black areas that she should have been a little yeah. bit more aggressive in her campaigning in that she wasn't. At least mm-hmm. her team wasn't. And absolutely. they found out the hard way. Like, hey. They might not come out. It's not mm-hmm. It's not even if they won't, they'll come out for him. They might not come out at all. And you mm-hmm. can't play that kind of game when you have a base that is, um, and, and you hate to say it, but he does have a strong base. He does. Yeah. And so when, you have, when you're dealing with that kind of base, you, like you said, you can't take anything for granted. True. You can't. True. You True. can't. Because some people might, might vote by not going to the polls. That's the, the oh, vote. You listen. You absolutely vote when you don't go to the polls. Exactly. You vote. You vote. Exactly. Exactly. You're voting, and your vote has been counted when you do mm-hmm. not show up. Absolutely. So yeah. Um. And and that'll be another thing that's very interesting. Uh, another reason as to why you know I I really want to see um some of these numbers, especially in Michigan. I want to see us go ahead and flatten that curve, which we've not yet managed to do because we are getting close to uh voting. Yes. And I, I don't want to play around with that November vote. I don't. Absolutely. I want us to be able to go to the polls. 
Mm -hmm. Like everybody that's able bodied and can go, I want us to be able to go to the polls. I do. Oh, you mean actually? You, you're not saying yeah. symbolically. You mean actually, literally actually, going to the polls. Literally, literally. Well, is, literally. But it, is that possible? Did I mean, you hear me? Think, will there be a cure by then? I don't know if there will be a cure by then or a vaccine. You think? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm I, just I never just. I hear what you're saying, but don't start talking to me about vaccines. No. Um, <laughs> See, there you go. And that's, al that's already been a raging debate for years. Yeah. Right? Right. Because right. you've heard some of the conspiracy theories. You know, some people would suggest that we're being herded into a vaccine. I'm just saying. I saw that. I've actually saw that quite a bit on my social media. I, I think the cool thing about my social media is so diverse. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, it's so diverse, but I learned so much. And I think, but that's one of the reasons why I love doing whose opinion is it anyway, even when yes. people don't agree with us. I love Absolutely. doing whose opinion is it anyway. Absolutely. Because I just always feel like it's good to know thought processes and True. it's good to know. And, you know, um, that, like I said, there, it's not like I'm just, I just look at everything Republicans stand for and go, ew, no. No, there are some things that I'm looking at Republicans like, I'm going to sit back and bow out this fight and let them fight this one because this is all right, you know? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> not, not this Republican president, the Republican party. Yeah. Not this president. Absolutely. Uh, nothing. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Okay, nothing. <laughs> but, so, I mean, that, but that's what happens, though. We all kind of get put in these different boxes, and it's just like you're yeah. trying to – human, and humans are so complex – that these yeah. boxes don't act, actually work. And, and the one thing, though, I, you know, I, and I accept the fact, Vic, that I'm a young progressive. I accept it. I accept <laughs> it. <laughs> You're <laughs> a young progressive. I'm okay with it. But the, funny part, <laughs> but the funny part is, I'm like, not even, and I told you this before, I'm not even like as progressive as a lot. Of, there are some people that are way more progressive than me. Uh -huh. Way more. Um, and, and I mean that in terms of how we politically define that. Yeah. It's just like, OK, all right, you know. <laughs> um, but what I was going to tell you was the interesting thing. Um, and it was so funny because it was I saw this on a couple of uh, Bernie Sanders supporters pages. Okay. And then also just throughout my timeline of everybody was saying you need to get the Bernie Sanders supporters to fold in. Absolutely. Um, so they're going to go vote for Trump. But apparently someone did a poll. And it turns out that 12 percent, the highest percent that said that they would go vote for Trump if their candidate didn't win. Buttigieg. Really? That I'm just as shocked as you. Twelve <laughs> percent. Interesting. I don't, know, I don't know who they polled, but yeah, twelve percent of Buttigieg uh, supporters said that if he did not win, they wow. would go vote for Trump. When only two percent of Sanders supporters said that, so that's why I'm saying I'm wondering. I said I'm wondering who they polled. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they only talked to like four it people. Might be the reverse. Know. It might be the reverse. <laughs> no. Nah. According to that, so? poll, I, I'm just saying, according to that particular okay, poll, okay. yeah, 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 interesting. So. Inter and, and what about the uh Bernie Sanders base, right? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what kind of draw does, does Joe Biden have with well, regards Sanders, to that base? So, well, Bernie Sanders, Senator Sanders, did go ahead and support, um, yeah, he, he went ahead and endorsed him, which you know, strong though. It doesn't matter though, because let me tell you what's crazy. That was faster than he did Secretary Clinton. Remember oh, yeah, how no doubt about that. True, true, true. He he so I think even Senator Sanders is like, look, um, this might not be the way I wanted to go, true, but right now true. it's currently going down the toilet fast. So we need to <laughs> but what about his people though? What about his people? What about his people? I, I think a good deal of them will um fall in line with that. And I think even those who do not necessarily want to vote. He has that a way, radical remnant too, Candace. He but has a radical is, remnant. But this is the thing, though. Even that radical remnant, you can't tell me that they will not look at how this country is being run right now. I think even a good portion of them are going to go, you know what, never mind. I do think you are going to have some people who say my candidate didn't make it, so yeah. I'm going I'm going to sit at home. But I think you have enough people, especially with the way that this pandemic is being handled, this mm -hmm. pandemic is being handled, and as deny, deny, point fingers, point fingers, oh, I've always said it. I've, it's like, True. what is this? Um, I mean, because even if um, and and then he asked governors to hold back like the unemployment rate or the unemployment numbers, right? Yeah. My thing is this, and this is how, and I'm not saying he doesn't have people around him advising him, mm -hmm. but this, I just think maybe it's a matter of whether or not he's listening. Because the reality <laughs> is we yeah. are in the middle of a pandemic. 
So even if those governors would have released those unemployment numbers, the American people, had he carried himself more presidential, mm -hmm. everybody would have understood. Yeah. Because everybody's losing their job right now. True, Nobody's going to blame. We can't blame you that we know of for a virus. You know what I'm saying? We yeah, can't true. blame you for it. <laughs> yeah. That we know so, of. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> exactly. That we know of. We, we can't. So everyone... So everyone would have understood those unemployment numbers. That yeah. would have been no big deal. Had you come out as the president, as the leader and yeah. said, hey, I know that millions of Americans are losing their job because of yeah. this. So when you see these numbers, they're going to be exceptionally high. And this is why. But mm -hmm. no, instead, we want to say don't release them. Instead, we want to talk about a wonderful job we're doing. Like at some point, just be honest. I don't know if that's possible, but just be honest. <laughs> so let me pose a question to you, Candace. Mm -hmm. Look at this holistically, right? When, right? when you're looking at how Donald Trump is handling this pandemic, right? How do you think it will affect his chances of winning or losing the the race overall? When looking time, at his base and the Democratic base. So every time I want to say, okay, people finally see, they finally see, I look up. And they are literally protesting in Michigan. They are literally yeah. protesting in Texas. And not only that, yeah. but in their protest, they're not holding up signs that say what they claim they're angry about. They're holding up signs saying Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your protest is e isn't even about what you said it was about. <laughs> you get a chance to get on camera and talk and you shout out Melania. Fake you news. Fake news. Face. Fake news. <laughs> right. So my thing is, my thing is just having seen what's happening in Texas and having seen what's happened in Michigan. Um, yeah. again, that's we're still on the you cannot just assume, True. you know, take no vote for granted. We're still True. on that. We're True. and even and if anything, we should be even more on high alert, high gear for that. Because mm -hmm. if you see that they can get thousands of people to go out and risk their lives. Yes. 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 Like, Vic, you tell me what yeah. the, what's greater than risking your life. There's nothing greater than that. True. So if you can Absolutely. get people to go out in the middle of a pandemic and hold a sign up about you, but, come on. But, but but I think some some of those people, Candace, I I think that they don't believe that the pandemic is as uh, perverse as it is as it actually is. You, mm -hmm. know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? No. Did you hear me? Yeah, you said you don't think that they think it is what it is. And I can agree with that. Exactly. I can exactly. agree with that. But I, unfortunately, am on the unfortunate end of knowing for a fact that the pandemic is true. Because I have yeah. family right now writing an obituary for their mother. My aunt died wow. two days ago. Two days oh, ago. Man, I'm sorry to hear about that, so man. For people to still say, well, it's not real or it's not happening. Yeah. Um, and I've got plenty of family members that are healthcare workers at the hospital, nurses, yes, doctors. Yes. You know what I'm saying? My and goodness. so you you you're saying COVID-19 is not real, but something is really happening. Absolutely. Something is happening here. Something. Absolutely. And so, 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 so why do you think then that part of his base has that view? Because this this is hitting people in all sectors of our society. Because it hasn't happened to them. People, uh, uh -huh. most of the time, people only understand from where they are and who they are. Yeah. And so yeah. because it hasn't happened to them and it hasn't happened to their family and they don't have to witness it, then it's not real. I can still to affect people show. in rural areas as well now, right? I'm noticing, I'm noticing those numbers are kicking yeah. up. And then I'm also yeah. noticing that you have those hospital systems saying, whoa, wait. Absolutely. We cannot. But that's but that goes to show you why we need all of the makeshift hospitals and care mm -hmm. centers. As you can see, Kobo or TFC in Detroit yes. has been turned into a hospital. Um, there's now one mm -hmm. in Novi as well uh, wow. that's been turned into um, a hospital. Yes. So it's just like uh, you and now you see all of these places have these drive through testing places. Yes. We're, we're looking at numbers here in Genesee County, well over mm -hmm. a thousand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, absolutely. That are, are affected. We have cases, I think, um, and I can't remember the last number, but we, we are in the double digits of death and well over, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, 50 deaths wow. in, just in Genesee County alone. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's just like for everybody that has the luxury of ignoring it, we don't have that luxury. That's true. And so That's true. we're still saying to you, uh, we, again, I believe in protesting. I believe yes. in the power of being for the people. I believe that that constitution is to protect us from a tyrannical government. I believe yes. all of that. 
I don't believe that you have the right to kill people because you want to go on a vacation. I don't believe that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. I, I don't Absolutely. believe that. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that you need to go burden a system that can't handle it, that's not built for and designed for. That home mm-hmm. will still be there and it will still be yours. Mm-hmm. It will still be yours. Mm-hmm. It will still mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. It's just like, come on. And then, like I said, the people that were arguing about uh, gardening and stuff, it's been snowing here. Yes. <laughs> in April. Absolutely. And trust me, normally the snow in April would take me off because I'm like, are you Absolutely. kidding me? You're supposed to be Absolutely. spring. But under Absolutely. these current circumstances, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm here to see this snow is the way I'm looking at it now. <laughs> you know, I'm not ill. I'm not on a mm-hmm. ventilator. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not somewhere where my family can't get to me or talk to me. You know, I think those are things that people need to take into account. Um, These Mm -hmm. are very frustrating times. Don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. Uh, I I definitely understand that the the anxiety or the depression or the anger that comes with something happening to you that you can't control. And so you lash out and you do what you can control, meaning take my butt to a Capitol and protest. I get all of that. But I also uh, need for you to understand that you your your right to protest mm-hmm. should not be more valuable to you than someone else's right mm-hmm. to live. Absolutely. Because as we've said time and time again, what what's a minor couple, three, four days of a body ache for me is literally life or death for someone else. And speaking and, of that, Candace, what, what do you think about the African-American community? Because if there's anybody who should be out protesting, right, raising uh, their voices, it should be our community. We <laughs> should be protesting. Vic, we, we should be crying out. out. Vic, we uh-huh. are not doing a protest and stand amongst people when it's a disease spread. What's no, no, no. There, 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 no, we can be creative now. There's many, no, there's many no, different I, ways in which we can protest. No, I we can get protest your point. virtually as well. I get your point, but you know, yeah. black people can stand outside in no group and you can catch a cold and die. We ain't doing no, that. No, I'm, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting I know. that. I'm messing with you. Right? I'm messing with yeah. you. <laughs> no, but think about it though, Candace. When you look at the city of Flint, the city of Detroit, right. New Orleans, New York, LA, mm-hmm. all across this country, when you look at the African American community, we are disproportionately the victims of this virus. Right? I agree. So if there's agree. anybody who should be raising their voices, it should be us. I agree. So, so I'm, I, I say that to say this. I've got one what, more. What is, your, what is your feeling on our community? Where are we at right now when you take the pulse of the African American community and this virus? I've got one more joke though about why Uh-oh, black people are not going to go. Here we go. <laughs> about why they're not going to go stand outside and protest. Vic, we can't even wear our shoes past the front door in a black household. So, you know, <laughs> we're not going. <laughs> it's a lot of things not happening, but I do agree with you. I do uh, agree with you about um, how this disproportionately affects us. Um, here yeah. in the state of Michigan, Governor Whitmer did put together a task force that is being headed up by our lieutenant governor, mm-hmm. uh, Garland Gilchrist, to get with uh, mm-hmm. health officials and um, political leaders in mm-hmm. the black communities that are being affected by this to see what we can do. But I want to yeah. say, that even here in Michigan, before this all happened, mm-hmm. back in October, Um, Governor Whitmer was already dealing with health disparities in the African-American community. She was already taking a look at and trying to implement some things to help with that. I think Mm -hmm. that, um, and I don't want anybody to think, oh, she's just the biggest Governor Whitmer supporter. I'm just, I'm I'm literally speaking facts about what she has done. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I I just think that what we need to do, Vic, is since everybody wants to act like they're so concerned now and they want to give us task force and all these other things is we need to have the conversation for beyond COVID-19, even while we're still in the midst of Mm COVID-19. What what does our healthcare systems look like uh, beyond COVID-19? What is us getting insurance and proper care and getting doctors that will actually listen and hear us beyond this? What does it look like to have access to medication? What does it look like to have access to safe, clean drinking water? Because obviously mm-hmm. we need water at this point to combat Absolutely. this virus. And what we're still that? dealing with that, right? We're still dealing we are. with that. We are. In the city. In we, this are. Region. we are. We mm-hmm. are. And Detroit. What does it what does it look like for us to have affordable water? You know, because Absolutely. that all of these things are factors that feed into us being disproportionately affected by diseases mm-hmm. when they come along because Absolutely. we're not in place on a regular basis. You yes. can't just blame all of this on diet. It's not all diet. True, I think you have true. to look at the fact that the irresponsibility Poverty also, Candace. Poverty. Come on. Economics. Come on. Come on. That's you have huge. to look at the 
you have to look at the irresponsibility of of how we're pricing food. You mean mm -hmm. to tell me this processed food is 99 cents, but oh, this yeah. fruit is hard to find and hard to get, and it's, it's costly? And then not only that, mm -hmm. but in most urban communities, uh, the, the fruit is not of good quality. Mm -hmm. um, you know how hard, mm -hmm. and, I, and right now, my mom keeps saying maybe it was just a bad crop, but you know how hard it is to find a good lemon? <laughs> okay. Okay. and cannot find it you know what i'm saying yeah, and yeah. normally i would go to the farmer's market because they uh -huh. have our farmer's market is closed right now where you can only order by you know you have to order first and they'll bring it to you outside you have to order way well in advance mm -hmm. and so i just think there are i mean even as it relates to we're being disproportionately affected because a lot of us are frontline workers a lot of us yes. are bus drivers a lot of us are uh, working in the fast food industry, whether we are the cashiers, whether we are the managers, whether we work the drive throughs you know, whatever the case may be. A lot of us are CNAs. A lot of us are working in group home Absolutely. settings. A lot, so you have to look at the fact that um, the job market and, and mm -hmm. the, the job desert and the availability that you have of that in African-American communities. How about the education disparity? You you put children in schools where you don't properly fund them. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're not able to get the right education. Keep, keep have the talking, Candace. My, my yep. battery is getting low. Keep talking. No problem. Where they don't have uh, the books or at this point, we're in the technological era. So they don't even have the technology. They don't have the, the laptop or they don't have the Internet. We don't have the infrastructure in inner cities to even um, move forward. Uh, as it relates to the, the new technological advances in education. And so there are a lot of things you have to look at uh, when it comes to that. So now you're behind as far as education is concerned uh, with them going to high school and then them going to uh, college or going wherever. We're, we have about 10 minutes left here. Well, eight now. Um, and so a lot of them are not necessarily getting accepted in the colleges. They have to go to community colleges. There are there are a lot of disparities. There's an education disparity, along with a, a food disparity, along with a health disparity. There are just a lot of things where it's like uh, we keep screaming equality when we need to be screaming screaming equity at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because it's one thing Absolutely. that if I'm already holding you back, but I'm saying you have access to that. You have access to that. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. ma make make it so that it's fair. You've already had the head start in life. So now you need to bring everyone else up to where you are. Give them those mm -hmm. same advantages. Like, And that's mm -hmm. the reality. So you can't blame someone's diet solely on that because we don't all eat meat. There are a lot of black vegans. There are a lot of black vegetarians. There mm -hmm. are a lot of people who believe in keeping their body, keeping their body alkalized. So it's just like, come on now, stop it. You can't put it all Absolutely. on diet. Is a good portion of a diet? Yes. But a lot of that could also be because of the foods that are available and the foods that have been made available because mm -hmm. of the lack of nutrition education in the African-American community to begin with. There are a lot of things that go into this and it's lazy just to say, oh, y'all didn't eat right, so y'all got diabetes, so now y'all mm -hmm. dying of mm -hmm. coronavirus. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. lazy. Mm -hmm. When there are mm -hmm. a lot of factors that go into that. So, so, so what do you think, what, what, what is the grassroots community saying about those issues in our community? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, about that. I'm going to tell you right now, in the Flint community, we have an amazing grassroots community. We mm -hmm. have amazing activists here. Like, they have not stopped working even in the midst of the crisis. They mm -hmm. were some of the people that were actually working with the governor's people to get this executive order that mm -hmm. everybody's water must be turned on. Yes, so they yes, not yes. taking a break. Um, mm -hmm. And even and so even some of the Detroit activists and grassroots people were working on that initiative as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think that they've had conversations where they pointed out about the health disparities. And I think that might have been another way of which the, the task force was birthed. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we, we have a very strong community um, mm -hmm. as far as grassroots goes here. And I definitely mm -hmm. want to applaud them for what they're doing and the fact that they're still working even in the midst of this crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of them are working with compromised immune systems themselves. So, yes, yeah, yes. Like, um, mm -hmm. and I, you say, what part do they play? They are yeah. the people, and the power lies in them, and they're pushing Absolutely. forward with their power. That's Absolutely. what. That's why I think the role they're playing. So, even though Candace, we're still in the throes of this this pandemic and so forth. If you were to look into your crystal ball <laughs> <laughs> with regard to the African American community. When we come out of this on the other side, from a leadership perspective, what do you see emerging? Do you see a shift occurring with regard to leadership in our community, right? You see a burgeoning class of leaders 
coming about? I do. I do. I think it's no longer going to be on the electeds when we come out of this. I think that um, uh, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Joyce, for joining us. She said great facts. <laughs> uh, and normally I would see everybody's comments, but I can't see them today. Paul's going to scroll them whenever they come. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I, I think that um, Yes, I definitely miss Obama's elegance. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> we have do we have people commenting. We Absolutely. just can't see them. So Vic, real quick, say hi to everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Hi. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Thank hello. you for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. And we're sorry. Absolutely. Um, next week I will make sure that I have my laptop set up to see your comments because we're here again <laughs> next week at 5 p.m. and we want you to join us and we want your input. We want to hear from you. Uh whose opinion is it anyway? Is definitely about your opinion. So let us have it. Yes. Especially Vic. Let him have it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Really? <laughs> we're at the five minute mark. But no, Vic, I think that as we come out of this, um, you you will have more people that are empowered by this oh, you will have more how so explain please you'll have i think this has shown all of the holes in the system yeah, the very true, system that you true. keep accusing me of having a little red book again <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's shown you has just not shown you everything i've been saying Vic. it's shown you everything i've been saying i told you like look man they, they out here they're hustling us this isn't right you can't tell me Vic. We yeah. built these systems. There's nothing in no one in, in in the way true. of saying we can't change these true, systems. True, true, you can't tell true. me that you can change. Totally and now yeah, that you totally have a agree. pandemic, you can see all those people that were told they couldn't work from home. All of those people yeah. who um who were not uh who who were handicapped or whatever the reason mm -hmm. that they it would have been better for them to work from home. Now we can see people can work remotely. You just didn't want them Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Now we can see that um certain people can get aid. You just didn't mm -hmm. want to give it. We can see that you can take a trillion and put it into people rather than into a war. We see Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We see that. Especially when I'm I'm not gonna go there with the wars. But anyway, but we see <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying now we see. We see the veil has been pulled back. And so because of that, I think people are going to be empowered. People are going to mm -hmm. be able to say like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nope, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. fact. We've seen that certain things can be done. And while we understand mm -hmm. that certain things, um, it won't be done on a large scale to where everybody is going to be on the system, but everybody's not trying to be on the system. But those yeah. who really need help or those who are truly burdened or true. those who really did need to be able to work remote from home that day and you only gave them 12 vacation days for two years. Anyway, mm -hmm. but now we <laughs> now we see. We see it now. True. We see true. it now. But that mm -hmm. also, we only have two minutes left, though. I had some people mm -hmm. hit me with the dick of... And <laughs> This is one of the things that Mike hit me with as well. Okay. Um, was so does do we think that they're gonna try to switch now that we see uh that you know the human workforce can all go down at once because of a virus? Are we gonna see more people trying to switch over to uh robotic workforce or oh, robotic? Oh yeah. Are they gonna try to replace us with machines now? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I agree with that was close to me. Yeah. A absolutely. Yeah. Uh. So given what you just said, if you were to apply that to the political domain, as far as the people are concerned, because you and mm -hmm. I both believe that the power rests with the people. Absolutely. If, wh how, how, what would, if you were given a stump speech, because you will be given a future stump speech, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to the people with regard to that, Candace? <laughs> what would I say? The same thing I've been saying to you since five o'clock. <laughs> that I believe that the power belongs with the people. I believe that that constitution was to protect you from a tyrannical government. Mm -hmm. Now get your constitution, protect mm -hmm. yourself, and move mm -hmm. forward. Make this mm -hmm. country look how you want it to look. Put mm -hmm. people in place that are in line mm -hmm. with your views and your pocketbook. Forget if they're mm -hmm. your friend. Forget if they're your cousin. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they have that they are competent enough to be in mm -hmm. the position. Make sure that they understand. Make sure that they mm -hmm. won't be timid. Make sure that they won't cower. Make sure they cannot mm -hmm. be bought. Make sure that your life, that they won't put a price on your head, quite literally. Mm -hmm. Make sure of that. Make sure absolutely. of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great stump speech, by the way, Candace. <laughs> Great stump speech. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> no. But yeah, I just, and we have about one minute left. Is there a closing thought you want to leave us with? Well, you 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 on roll today. I mean, you on roll today. Uh, that's why I became the interviewer. So I have nothing <laughs> more to add to, to what you said, man. <laughs> okay, so I guess the only thing that I want to add is thank you to Paul and thank you to ninety two point one FM WFLV from Odyssey House 
for giving us this You're platform. Welcome. Want you, thank you, Paul, for a wonderful, wonderful show <laughs> such as Whose Opinion Is It Anyway? It is now 6 p.m. We are out of time, but we will be back here next Friday at 5 p.m. for Whose Opinion Is It Anyway? with Candace and Victor on 92.1 FM WFOV. Take care and until next week at 5 p.m. Peace.